Nerd Rage Relegates. I can hear you. I can't see you. There he is. Hey. There he is. As a great man on uh, Happy Days once said, hey. Hey. So yesterday, so yesterday, uh, since it was Christmas, I had nothing to watch really. So I went on Hulu and watched like six hours of Triple Dipple D. <laughs> and then today I I, will, so I, and I I cannot help but watch every time I see the real guy on Food Network I can't help but hear Djibouti talking about drinking a bucket of nacho cheese and <laughs> and hanging out with Joe Theismann oh man that was my one I was sitting there watching it and like today I had a migraine for the first part of the day so I, I just put that on as background noise and all I keep hearing the whole time was, "Oh fuck, you know, I love, you know." <laughs> so I was, I got lost between halfway between Flavor Town and Titty City, and oh my god, look, there's a food place. Let's go. One time, me and Paula Deed and Gordon Ramsay had a three way. <laughs> oh look, you dropped a dollar. Oh, oh god. <laughs> it's moist down there. Oh, you're not even gonna wash it. Oh, you're a dirty fuck. <laughs> Oh man, I love I love the Djibouti, just the dubs. I love, man, everything they do is funny. That's that's why I think they just they just probably they're the people that deserve the the money. I think out of everybody yeah. I see on because they produce produce like basically three major streams of content and they're all fucking funny. Like everything they do. Yeah, yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Nerd Race Renegades podcast. We hope you all had a very festive. Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Festivus, Friends of Us, whatever the hell you you celebrate. We hope they had a lot of food, friends, and family and fun. I know Chief and I had food, friends, family, and fun. Yeah, I had a lot of food and uh, a lot of family. Oh, and uh, friend, uh, uh, friends, basically, I just talked to spin. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, my workout regime is going to – I'm going to have to work out like five times a day now just from all the food. It's like, fuck. You know, it's like I – like you feel, I felt good, you know, all year. I've lost that weight, and then Christmas comes around, and Christmas is like, hey, 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 you think you lost weight there? No way, fat boy. <laughs> hey, I'm I've eaten like three fourths of a pumpkin pie in like the matter of uh, thirty two hours or something. Uh, so it's like Christmas tradition. My wife makes a lasagna for Christmas Eve, so I'm just sitting there. I'm like, God, lasagna. I'm like Garfield. I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to chow down on a whole fucking thing of it. Oh, I'm just, uh, don't mind me. I'm, I'm checking uh, uh, for, for review purposes later. I'm, I'm going through and making sure I know what, I'm, what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? I will say this. I will say this. For Christmas, you know, Christmas 27, and, and it, well, let's just talk about all 2017. I was thinking back on it today as I was dying of a migraine most of the day. And I'm just sitting here thinking about how fortunate the Renegade show has been in 2017. The stuff we were able to do, the friends we've made over the last year, it has just been, it's been a great year for the show. And I really want to talk a little bit about it because we've got new people that listen to the show. We want them to, to know just how far we've come in the last year. And we've come quite a ways in the last year uh, than what we have. Now the show, of course, we've been around, what, three, four years now. And the stuff that we've been able to accomplish has just been amazing, and the the people that we were able to talk to has been just so fantastic. And 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 for a little show like ours, a little show that could, we got up that hill, Chief. We thought we could, and we did. Yep. And then we hoisted the flag of Black Phillip on the hill. (laughs) Yes, indeed, indeed. I mean, just just the fact that you know James has been on with us twice this year, and James has really become a good uh, friend of the show. 
the angry video game nerd, just to have him come on the show, which was always one of my bucket list. And I, I, I marked that off the bucket list pretty early in the show's lifespan. You know, thirty like thirty three episodes in, <laughs> you know, I, I checked that one off. But the fact that James has been has come on, you know, numerous times this year uh, to hang out with us. The fact that we met such amazing people like Dolly, who has been a, who's been with us now ever since she first came on. Uh, going uh, going to New Jersey, being able to be a part of the Coleco Expo, and and all the cool things that happened there, uh, and, and doing a live show, the first time we've ever actually done a live show for the fans, as far as you know, on this type of platform, has just been a it, it's been a whirlwind this year. And I think other than maybe a week or so where you were sick, a show every fucking week. Yeah, it's, uh, we've been pretty consistent. We've always been pretty consistent. There's been a few times here and there due to family things or sickness that we haven't. But not many, not many days off ever. No, we're always chugging along, chugging along. And speaking of the the flag of Black Phillip, so Christmas yesterday, I'm like, ooh, I need to go on the PlayStation Store. I need to see what uh, what is on sale on PlayStation for Christmas. And yeah. lo and behold... The entire Goat Simulator bundle pack was on sale, and I was like, "Fuck it, fuck it, I gotta, I gotta get Goat Simulator." And I had so much fun, Chief. I, I even streamed a bit of it on YouTube, and oh, I saw it was live. I, I was uh, doing some, some things today, so I didn't get a chance to look at it, but uh, I saw it's on there. Oh, it, Chief, I, I was able to sacrifice the humans and become the Devil Goat. <laughs> and I just I found the tur- the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the sewer and just ransacked them. Oh God! I had so the, so the content it's got the Goat Simulator, which is amazing. But then there's like Goat in Space, where you're on like this space like colony and you can just ran like run rampant on this space colony. Then there's um, Goat MMO Simulator, where it's like Goat in World of Warcraft. <laughs> and there's zombie goat simulator where like you're in like a post-apocalyptic world and you're just like this zombie goat just like terrorizing the world <laughs> it's a game that is so it's glitchy but it is it's one of those games you don't play it just to be like oh i gotta get to an end game you play it because you're like fuck this is hilarious i was dying i was laughing so hard i was like doing flips off of trampolines and and blowing up the gas station and all sorts of fun shit. <laughs> yeah, I see I see little bits of that game. I've never played it, but it looks funny. Oh, it is hilarious, dude. I was dying. It's like everything we could want in a game based on a goat. <laughs> and I want a goat in every game I play if I had my choice. I got this big box game today. It almost sounds like I'm getting like an old porno, a big box porno. Um, <laughs> but I bought um, I bought these old pornos today. <laughs> oh yeah, I bought these old pornos. You know. Um, no, I went to I went to GameStop today. I had a fifteen dollar gift certificate uh, uh, gift card, and they had this behind the counter. It's a Fate Extello, uh, the Umbral Star. It's a Japanese RPG based off the Fate anime, hmm. and. Uh, just a huge fucking box, dude, and it comes with like a wall scroll. It comes with cards. It comes with a fully detailed uh, like booklet, and it actually. I, and I put it up on Twitter, and people were like, "Holy shit! This game, the the game actually comes with an instruction manual." <laughs> and fucking full, like not just like that little like one page. This is like a full blown instruction manual, dude. It tells you it controls the story, characters. Everything. I was like, holy shit, a game that actually has an instruction manual. I don't see that shit anymore, so I'm, I can't wait to, to pop these in. Uh, and it's one of the, it's, a Jap- it's a Japanese RPG, and of course it says, features the original Japanese voices with English subtitles. So I get to read and hear, I can't wait. <laughs> God, I can't wait. There you go. So excited. Can't wait. Fuck yeah. Oh, fuck. I, w- I was halfway between Flavortown and Titty City. Oh God, I'm, I'm Guy Fieri on Triple Dibble D. Drink a bucket of nacho cheese. Yeah, <laughs> me, Paula Dean, and uh, going to Ramsey had a three-way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that shit! That my still my favorite all-time uh, dub on there is uh, on Djibouti dubs. No, anybody cares. 
Uh, my favorite all time one is the carrot juicer guy. I mean, this is the speech about murdering his wife. <laughs> that sounds horrible, but in the, in context, it's in the thing, it's really fucking funny because the guy looks really sinister and he has like these really crazy eyebrows. And, uh, it's obviously not what he really says. Yeah. They dub it over, but it's fucking, it's funny just the way they do it. I can't believe you, so, you motherfuckers have been, don't know how to cook with top ramen. <laughs> I know this all you cheap bastards got in your pantry. Don't worry, I'm going to teach you how to cook Girl Kathy. It's your, hi, it's your girl Kathy. I got the top ramen. <laughs> my favorite part of that all one. Right, come on. My favorite part of that one is she's like, I know you fat motherfuckers trying to lose weight, but quit being a basic bitch and put some top ramen on that salad with a nice little vinaigrette. That's Italian for vinegar. My favorite is that they're rolling up the... the... My mac Yellow and cheese, shit. My mac and cheese. That's how I roll my fat mac dead. The cheese blunt. <laughs> oh, man. What a year, dude. What a fucking year it's been. I mean, you get to eat, like, like just based on Christmas yesterday, you're, you're like, set for, like, the next two months of food with food cards. Yeah, uh, my my family, uh, I, I, I would say on both, both uh, my wife's side and my side, decided that... Uh, they are the most unimaginative uh, <laughs> gift givers in the world. No, but uh, I was, they're really cool. But uh, yeah, they just they basically set me up to eat out for the rest of my life. <laughs> so your your family hooked you up to eat because you know because we know you only got ramen in your pantry, chief. Yeah, well, uh, we're not big. Uh, well, I, you know what? It's not like I, I make some pretty good food. I'm not gonna lie. I can't. It just it sucks to have to do that. Uh, a lot. So my wife and I, and because we don't have any kids, we basically just eat out every all the time. I mean, and not just shitty stuff. Like we'll go to like restaurants and get like real food. You know, <laughs> so it's not just garbage fast food all the time. But beans, we don't cook. Beans, beans, beans. Yeah, we, we don't we don't cook a whole whole lot at home. But uh, so uh, everybody, literally everybody, just gave us. Guess you gets to restaurants and shit. <laughs> what I saw, I saw like Longhorn and. Well, it's uh, no, I think I got, it's uh, one of them is. Um, Outback. Outback is one of them, and then I got. Uh, oh, let's see, other one. Uh, Texas Roadhouse, I think, is another one. Mm. And then. Oh, uh, Bloom and onions, here we come. The like, a- Applebee's, I think somebody gave us some like a bunch of money for that. I don't, it was just it, tons and tons. And it was like uh, like hundreds of dollars. <laughs> I was like, gee, you know, I, I appreciate. I mean, that's, it's it's not the most imaginative uh, thing to get somebody. But okay. I mean, that's my family. Yeah, I mean, like we're all grown. Now. Like, there's not really, there's a couple of little babies in the family, and every, we go all out for the little kids. Yeah, but. Uh, for the adults, none of us really give a shit anymore. <laughs> so we're just like, here, here, here you go. That's what Merry I, Christmas. That, that's the thing that I try to learn is, you know, it's like you're like as an adult, I realize, you know, I will not get to haul as I once did when I was a child, you know. But uh, my kids had a great Christmas. I mean, uh, the son got uh, two Yokai Watch games. He got this. He got a. He's got. He got one of the Todd McFarlane uh, Attack on Titan figures. Yeah. So uh, he got one of those, uh, you know, they got Legos, and they both got Android tablets. Uh, and the, the thought process behind the... Yeah, yeah. and guess and guess who's, uh, who's, who's uh, on the messenger list uh, for the... Uh, yeah, uh, as soon as Facebook... Uncle Space is, Chief is on right. the list. Now, the, now <laughs> Facebook still has to get the... It's got it up for the iPhone, but it's got to get it up the that service up for the Android. But, um, so these tablets, of course, the mind, the, the mind frame behind them were... They can do their homework, you know, stuff on there. They can do their schoolwork stuff on there. And, of course, they've been on YouTube for, like, three days, like, two days, you know, ever since they opened them up yesterday. <laughs> That's, and, what That's what I do. So, you hey, know, come on them. You know, they, they're watching their videos while I'm watching, dumps, you know, diners, drives, and dives. You know? <laughs> and, um, oh, man, I went on a Djibouti spree the other night, just off topic for one second. Yeah, I, I was, my wife was working late, so I was up just watching. I just put their channel on and let it play all night. I, I but do, back to your story. No, I do that too. So, like, I have this thing when I, I cannot sleep in silence. I have to have noise because yeah. 
It's just me too. like silence to me. Something's going on. Something's wrong. If there's like yeah, it's it's that. almost louder than just uh, you can. Yeah. I'd rather have somebody banging a hammer on the wall than nothing. Right. So I'll sit there at night and I'll put on Game Sack or I'll put on uh, Brad. I'll put on Cinema Snob, you know, and I'll just let it play until my phone times out at like two in the morning, you know. And uh, of course, I have my phone plugged in all night, so my wife's like, God, it just keeps playing and playing and playing. I'm like, damn right, it's playing and playing and playing. You know, or I'll put on Phalus and just listen to it. Uh, so my kids are doing, like, the same thing now. They got their th- CDs or their videos, and they're watching them at night before they go to bed. And uh, But it was, a, it was a good Christmas, you know. We had we had some chicken in the crock pot for, chi- for Christmas. Oh, that was good. And I found we have this thing uh, by our house. There's, a, there's like, a local, um, like, creamery that yeah. ships their cream and their milk to, like, the local grocery stores. You know, it's the ones that they come in, like, the real glass bottles, you know, and then... You, like, take the bottles back to the grocery store, and they give you, like, two bucks back and shit like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, the old, like the old days. Yeah, <laughs> the old days when the milkman would come, screw your, you know, screw your woman, and then uh, leave the milk. Uh, there, the, when I grew up, when I was a little kid, there was a, a Kroger that we used to do that. Yeah, so we went to Kroger the other day to pick up some stuff for the Christmas meals, and they actually had, like, custard, in, in like, creamed custard, you know, in the bottle. And I'm just like, oh, fuck, yeah, no, my... My wife doesn't like custard. I am a custard fanat custard pie. I like it. Yeah, I like that. God, custard and a donut. Give me yeah, that donut. Oh, donut man. for sure. Give me that custard, man. So the kids have been drinking the custard and they're just like loving it. My wife's my wife's from up north and she can't understand us. She can't understand our southern ways. Yeah, I'm I'm way up north and I dig it, man. She didn't. She don't understand the the pork rinds and the, you know. The pork cracklings and things like that. Mm, the salt pork. Mm. I'm on the border of right on the border of Wisconsin. So I, and I and I mean well, uh, Wisconsin. It's it's of course it's going to be popular too because <laughs> oh yeah, anything with dairy is going to be going to be a big hit. You're gonna be in that you're in that cheese country, cheese and milk right. country. Damn right, man, the best. And then of course I got in my Christmas watch and I watched Garfield Christmas, which is a uh, it's a staple. You gotta watch Garfield Christmas, and I wish I had that machine he got in his dream, where you just put the Santa hat on and gives you whatever the fuck you want, just by thinking of it. I'd be like, I'd be like, all, I'd be like, Action Comics number one, and it just pop out of the bag, be like, <laughs> fuck yeah, motherfucker, <laughs> fuck yeah. Uh, and I watched George C. Scott's A Christmas Carol, which is another classic. I and watched Santa Claus Conquers the Martians. That was my that's one that's- that I got in. That's a good one. Uh, of course, all three Santa Claus movies with Tim Allen were watched. Oh, uh, yeah, I did. I watched uh, two of those. I watched two and three this year. Got to watch those. Uh, and then I was on Hulu, and, of course, there was that. I didn't watch it, but uh, the, the movie that the uh, that uh, Cinema Snob and the Nostalgia Critic reviewed, uh, Dear Santa, the one where the rich girl finds the letter from a little girl to Santa, and then she just, like, in, like, like uh, immerses herself in their lives and breaks him and his fiance up so she could marry him and stuff. You know what I think is a, a is a conspiracy. I have seen the movie Elf like three or four times in the last four days, and it did, that didn't even register that I'd seen it. It's almost subliminal. Like they show that goddamn movie so many times, <laughs> everywhere you go, it gets into your brain and you if you forget you saw it, so that you'll want to see it again the next time. I think and- that's a there's something embedded in that film. Am I the only one that's not crazy about that movie? I'm sick to fucking death of it, dude. It's <laughs> I'm like, tired of it. Like, that movie, I never thought that movie was that funny. I never I watched it, it and funny. I chuckled at it, and I thought, good enough, I never need to see that again. And now it's fucking, I don't understand why it's so huge. I don't understand why it's such a hit. That's I don't like, get it. That's like Napoleon Dynamite, dude. Like, I fucking hate Napoleon Dynamite, but I have to watch I, it whenever I it's on. The, I loved that movie because I knew a kid. Uh, I don't want to say his name on <laughs> on the show, but I knew a kid in uh, when I was in high school that was the fucking spitting image of Napoleon Dynamite and fucking talked like him and ever was this that guy. I knew that guy and and he went in my high school and I I sat behind him in uh, in a couple different classes and then. I went to some classes at, at the, the shitty local community college when I right when I got out of, before I actually went to school later and got my degree. I I, uh, I went to these shitty community college classes and the kids sat 
like two seats in front of me in this like stupid math class I had to take because <laughs> I was a, I was shit at math so I had to take this remedial math shit and uh, so I'm so and this kid's in front of me and and, and like he failed out again like <laughs> I don't know I I don't want to make fun of him, like like but this kid was, was like I like when Napoleon Dynamite came out, I was like, "You've got to be shitting me, man! No way! <laughs> that, that is exactly that fucking guy." It's so funny though, because that movie—I mean, it's quotable. That movie is quotable. But I'm just sitting there like, "Why do I watch this thing?" Now I did watch because it was on Hulu, and I had to watch it because it has every—it has—it has all the greatest things in it. This this is like the great movie, okay? I watched Disney's The Three Musketeers, okay? Let me explain why this movie is is amazing. First and foremost, you have Kiefer Sutherland in this movie. Which, it's Kiefer Sutherland. The dude's a lost boy. Come on, he's a fucking vampire on the pier. Uh, it has Charlie Sheen as, a, <laughs> as Aramis, the religious musketeer. Then you have Tim Curry. So you have Charlie Sheen, Kiefer Sutherland, and Tim Curry in a movie together. Mix in a little Chris O'Donnell, a little Oliver Platt, and you have Michael Wincott. Now, if people don't know who Michael Wincott is, Michael Wincott's an actor. He's been in a ton of shit. And he kind of sounds like he ate the pack of cigarettes. He didn't just smoke it. He ate the pack of cigarettes. <laughs> so he has a voice like this. I mean, it's real low. He was in The Crow. He was in... Um, he was guy, oh yeah yeah okay yeah I know he was that top guy dollar in the crow he was guy Gisborne got the and, kind of yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah uh, he was guy Gisborne and Robin Hood Prince of Thieves with Kevin Costner I mean yeah okay yeah I know exactly yeah. who the guy is you know he has he's got the real long super straight long hair in yeah the yeah 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 <laughs> but just that movie the fact that you have all those 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 that nowadays you see those elements and it just, that guy was born to play a villain right. He was. <laughs> There's no way that guy's ever going to be, like, the hero cop. In he's never going to be, like, the romantic love interest where he's like... No, oh, no way. Like, no, I love you that, with every ounce of flavor in my body. Snake, got, like, a snake face and a, and a horrible voice. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, from the moment I I'm saw the you. hero. From the moment I saw you. It's like Christian Bale Batman. <laughs> from the moment I saw you, I wanted to know, where is he? <laughs> Swear to me. Swear it. <laughs> You do not run this shit, You know, so now I did. Now I also finally, I'm a little late to the party, but I finally was able because I hadn't had time. But I finally was able to sit down and fully watch through all of uh, Spider-Man: uh, Homecoming. Yeah, I was finally able to watch through it. Just the little things in there that are that that hint to something even bigger are so amazing. There's so many little things in there, like it, like if you know like there's a part where they're talking, they you see the school news people, like up on the TV screen as everybody's walking to class, and one of them one of them is Betty Brant. I don't know if you yeah. caught that. One of them's Betty Brant, you know, and and that Kevin uh, or um, Michael Keaton is just amazing in this fucking movie. Yeah, I like so that he's good. got a. He's actually got. He's got a actually a better motivation than the actual comic vulture does. <laughs> he's got a better reason to be doing what he's doing. And it had Tyne Daly. Tyne Daly was in this movie. Yeah, that, that, well, I, that was. was I was like, it took me a second to even remember who who that was. It's like, wait a minute, Cagney and Lacey's in this. Yeah, it's like you know, which one was she, Chief? Was she Cagney or Lacey? Uh, I think she was Cagney. Yeah. No, she was she Cagney. Yeah. I think she was Cagney. But I so I, I watched that. <laughs> Tell you the truth, honestly. I watched that. I get it mixed up with Kate and Allie, that show at the oh. <laughs> the comedy <laughs> show. Kate and Allie, <laughs> Kate and Allie beat cops. I get it mixed up with Kate and Leopold. Um, <laughs> and then of course Jackman and Wolverine's yeah, in there, right? Wolverine. And uh, you know, because it came out, my daughter wanted to see it. I had to watch the uh, the My Little Pony movie. I heard it's terrible from another parent. I don't know what you think. Um, I well, here's the thing: having a do having an almost nine year old daughter who has watched every episode of My Little Pony numerous, numerous times, and therefore I have seen them over and over and again. Uh, there is one character in the show, like the actual TV show, that if they would have just called on him at like the beginning of this movie, it would have been done in like two minutes. And the character's name is Discord. Okay. 
he's a chimera. He's this, he he's a chimera, and he has control over like chaos. And it's fitting because he's voiced by John DeLacy, who uh, who's Q from Star Trek. Oh, yeah. Q voices him, and he's the he's the master of chaos. But I'm sitting there going, wait a minute, they're friends with this guy by the time this movie came out. Why didn't they just call on him? He could have taken care of everything in like two minutes, and that's the end of the movie. <laughs> um, but you know what? As a, for a kids movie, it's not bad. For a kids movie, you know, it, it's not like an adult movie. It's a kids movie, and, it, and it's yeah. good for kids. And I've been, I've actually been finding myself saying that a lot lately with some of the like like the Smurfs uh, Lost Village. So my my kids watch it. I sat down and watched it with them. And I sat there going, it's not the Smurfs I grew up with, you know, but as far as just like a harmless kids movie, it's not bad as a kids yeah. movie. Well, I'm not here's gonna, my question. I'm not going to so critique it. I don't know like any any like br- r- hardcore brony guys. Uh, what I'm wondering is, is how is the movie set? Because those those dudes have like a strict continuity for what they like about My Little Pony and shit. And I'm wondering if the movie lived up to the standards that they've all been clamoring about for like the I, last couple of years. I honestly don't know. Now my mom caught a hold of me last night, and she she was like, "We just saw Jumanji," and she was raving up and down that it's such a great movie. That Jumanji is amazing. I'm kind of sitting there going, nah, it, "It's a rental for me. It's not really a go to the theater and see yeah, Jumanji." Yeah, I'll for watch me. it with Tom. She said the thing they, I don't like is the fact that it's it, it's like a video game now. I, I the, one of the reasons that I even like the first one a little bit is because it's like the creepy old board game and it's. She said that they they explain magical. Why, she said they explain why it's a video game, how it became a video game, and that they do pay homage to Robin Williams in the movie. Um, but I'm sitting here going, and as much as I love the dude, as much as I loved him when he wrestled, the rocks in fucking everything. It's like. He has, like, like, every movie of the year is, like, starring Dwayne Johnson. I mean, he's got this one coming out. And then he, I think literally, like, if you watch the trailers for, like, Jumanji and Rampage, he didn't even change costumes. He just went from one <laughs> set to the other. <laughs> okay, Rock, we need you for this one. Yeah. Just, and, and now, already, run, run, pretend you're running from this now. <laughs> yeah. You know? And but and literally, if you put them side by side, it's like he's wearing the exact same thing in Jumanji that he's wearing in in Rampage. They just moved it from one green screen to another. Yeah, you know, in Rampage, I'm I'm looking forward to Rampage as like a you know that'll be like a like a sit at home watch movie because. Well, he's got another Fast and Furious movie like spinoff coming out too, yeah. and and the one that I actually do want to see, Black Adam, is coming. So. I think yeah. Black Adam would be. I think he'll be able to make a good Black Adam just because he already he already looks like you don't even need to put makeup on him. He literally no. looks like Black Adam. Nah, no. I mean, I mean, I like The Rock. I do like The Rock, but he's in fucking. Air. It's like, it's like with with every actor in Hollywood being accused of something or another and getting blacklisted. It's like, well, we need a male lead. Everybody else has been caught up in these scandals. Who do we get? The Rock. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the rock, and the, and the rock's yeah. like, fuck yeah, I'll do it. The rock's not like, you know, you know what? I don't think. Oh, he's not movie. stupid. Rock's you know, it, eventually he knows it's gonna dry up. Like with Arnold, it's dried up. And Arnold can't put out a, a big hit these days. No. So I know he he he's thinking I'm gonna put out as many fucking blockbusters as I can and rake in twenty million bucks a pick. That's why the Arnold's doing those like. Like mobile app commercials. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> you can join with me in total war. We will destroy yeah. our enemies. I mean, I guess he wanted to serve the public by whatever for whatever reason. But I mean, he, he passed up some of his prime years to be the governor, and that doesn't pay shit. The governor <laughs> of like, California. I mean, I guess that's something you can, you know, that's what. I, well, if you know Arnold's history, you know just how fucking American that dude is. Like, is how he is like. He's full he of love. loves. America. He loves America, and he is like the ultimate success story for yeah. for an immigrant coming to America. And uh, so I guess he wanted, just wanted to be the governor, because I know I know public service, even a governorship, doesn't pay that much compared to being a fucking Hollywood movie star. Now, so I, will, I mean, he passed up a lot of dough to do it. Now I will say this: I'm jealous of you. I am jealous of you, because you okay. have Amazon Prime, which yes, means. I do. You get to watch Jean Claude Van Johnson. I started watching. I watched. I, I can give you a quick little review of the first give episode. Give me a review of that because is it is it as good as it looks? It I 
honestly, I was a little disappointed. It wasn't really what I wanted from it. I was kind of hoping that he was going to be like a, like try to blend in and be like a regular guy in society as John Claude Van Damme. Uh-huh. <laughs> and that's what I was thinking about. But what it actually is, is you find out that even though Van Damme is a movie star, he has a secret alternate uh, code name of Johnson. And he's like, really is like an international super spy guy. And there's like all <laughs> kinds of intrigue going on. And it, it's kind of, it's, it gets kind of silly. I, I, like I, I might watch a couple more of them to see if I get into it more. But judging from the first one, it doesn't seem like it's all that great. But uh, sometimes it takes a couple episodes. I'll give it a couple episodes because sometimes it takes a couple to figure out what it is. Speaking of, like, give it a couple episodes. So the other night, so I think it was, like, Christmas Eve, my wife was like, the kids go to bed. She's like, let's watch something together. I'm like, cool, let's watch something together. So first we watched, like, the newest Jeff Dunham special, which I laughed at. And um, then she's like, hey, there's this show that my friend likes to watch. Let's check out the episode. I said, well, what is it? She goes, well, it's called Rain. So I'm like, okay. Uh, it had to, She's like, it's, it deals with Mary, Queen of Scots. I'm like, okay, so like a period piece show. I'm all for, like, you know, like, I love the Tudors. I thought the Tudors were a great show. She puts on this episode, and it's like... Clueless and CW meet medieval times <laughs> to the point that there's like they're at this like royal ball, but they're playing pop music at this royal ball. And I'm like, oh, what yeah. the fuck? And Dude, I'd be like, too into that shit. Be like, no, nope, I was else. like <laughs> slamming my fists on the side of my chair because I was like, first and foremost, the editing is just fucking horrible it is like rapid fire editing so it's like scene two seconds scene two seconds scene i mean there's no like smooth transition it's just pop 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 and they do not introduce really any of the characters you don't know who any of these motherfuckers are it's the first episode you're supposed to like introduce who these people are was there like a comic book that came out that's what you're supposed to buy okay they have like this prince there's a prince he's the prince of france and he goes into his room, and there's a girl in there, and they start boning. And I'm sitting there going, like, they have this dialogue that makes it seem like they know who each other are, but you as the audience don't know who the fuck this woman is. She's just some weird bitch that showed up in his room, and they freaking boned, you know? And it just, it makes no fucking sense. So she was like, what well, do you want to watch the next episode? I'm like, fuck no, I don't want to watch the next episode. I will fucking go fucking nuts. So then I'm what you know I watch the the Three Musketeers and she calls me out because at the or she's like at the end of the you know the movie ends and the credits start but during the credits you know you get that great song by Sting Rod Stewart and Brian Adams and she's like they're playing pop music I'm like but it's during the credits it's not in the movie it's not during the action of the movie during the and plus it's the credits, and plus, it's it's Brian Adams, Sting, and Rod Stewart. Okay, you can't say fucking shit about Sting, Brian Adams, and Rod Stewart. Okay, because if you say something bad about Sting, he'll he'll be watching you, Chief. Yeah. Every every step you take, he'll be watching you. I'm always looking over my shoulder for Sting. He's everywhere. Every I talked shit you about take. him back in 1992. Mm, every I've been watching for him ever since. <laughs> he, he the ultimate creeper. Since I was a junior in high school. But that's my thing. So then after that, I was like, well, look, there's this, there's a show on Netflix that's called Myth and Monsters. And mm. it's, 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 the, Chief, let me tell you, this is fantastic. So it's called Myth and Monsters. First of all, it is hosted by a 70-year-old British guy. And he's, oh. I mean, full-blown suit, white beard. He's in a, he's in a library with, with multiple, <laughs> like, first edition books. <laughs> Like uh, Edinburgh from Jurassic Park. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he's at a desk, and he's just going, Welcome to Myths and Monsters! He, that's basically, and he's like... Then, like, the first episode is, like, Heroes and Villains, and it talks about, like, King Arthur and Odysseus, you know, and the monsters and the, the, the quest that they went on. And then there's, like, a whole episode talking about, like, Celtic... Celtic, um... Uh, myths and like fairies and the other world and what happens when heroes would get caught in the other world and get lured in by fairies oh man and and all the visuals are shown through like old paintings and old illustrations that people did during like the renaissance and things like that 
I mean, they talk about Sigurd from the Viking mythology, and and I mean, I'm actually yeah, I'm looking at uh, my my Tolkien uh, Legend of Sigurd and uh, Gudrun, Gudruin. Yeah, I mean, oh god, they talk about him fighting Fafnir the dragon, and and how he killed the dragon, and how, and they actually do talk in there about how a lot of these old myths, if you wa- if you watch things like Tolkien and things like that, that you know. The inspiration from these old myths that kind of helped to build like Tolkien's world and these other fantasy worlds. Oh yeah, I mean uh, Tolkien took just about everything from other things and yeah, put it, it all together in one world. Great. Dude, it is great. Myths and monsters, I highly recommend it. It is fucking amazing. I have been uh, uh, looking high and low for movies to do uh, new commentaries on, and I oh. just found. Uh, uh, the uh, Red Brown and uh, Strike Commando. We'll get another Red Brown one on the horizon for everybody. Oh, yeah. I, I found uh, Hercules in New York. Oh, that's a good one. With Arnold. I, would, I want to find, is it the version where they've dubbed him, or is it the version where they put his regular voice in, into it? I'm not sure. It's on Hulu. There's one on, it's on Hulu and on Netflix. There's, there's two, ver- like, I have to see which versions are on which. The best one, because they, they did... Uh, I would swear that that movie, they overdubbed Arnold the first time I saw it, and he had a really, hey, how you doing? You know, like a regular voice, like uh, like they would dub over a kung fu movie. And uh, and then I saw it again not too long ago, and it was just Arnold's regular voice in it. And he was just, they used his regular audio track for it. So I, I know for a fact out there there's a really funny, weird one where it's overdubbed Arnold through the whole thing with a different voice. We've been looking high and low. I, if anybody, if you haven't checked it out, we do have our commentary for Star Wars Holiday Special up on the YouTube, so make sure you check that out. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on that one. And yeah, a lot of uh, editing time on that one. God damn. Yeah, there was a, there was some sort of glitch in the middle of it. But it worked, because I, I, I previewed it, and it sounded good. Sounds fantastic, so make sure you check that out. We, we are looking forward to a lot of those in 2018. A lot of those. We've got a lot oh, with, of horizons. With Amazon Prime and YouTube, uh, the possibilities are endless. <laughs> Just the the hits keep coming from Amazon Prime. And and what's funny is a lot of those shitty movies I'm finding on Amazon Prime are also available on YouTube yeah. for everybody. So, I mean, maybe one day we'll do like a like special because everybody's done it. But maybe we should do our own spin on things like Manos or something like that. Yeah, maybe yeah. we should like do a classic, like a classic one that everybody's done. Plan Nine would be my choice for number one. Plan Nine from Outer Space. Yeah, that's a good one. And uh, uh, I, I was gonna, I was gonna, rem- I wanted to let people know that when we do the commentaries, uh, we're gonna try to make um, make them all as accessible, like as YouTube or Netflix or something as possible, uh, because. I discovered there is a discrepancy in in runtimes from like Amazon to YouTube, and uh, with Robo War, the first eight seconds are dead on with that matchup. But if you watch the Amazon Prime one, the movie starts getting ahead of the track. Uh, if you do it with the version that we watched on YouTube, the same one that we watched, then it stays right on with it. So there there is a difference. So as best you can, try to watch the ones the movie versions that we that we recommend. Yeah, they're the ones that we'll put. I usually put them down in the in the description, so you you have yeah. them readily available. Yeah. Usually, um, yeah, yes. There's always a link spin, but so, yeah. so far, so far, all of them are you, you can get to them on YouTube, I think, and watch with just a link to YouTube. Yeah, we got a lot of that. We got. A, I can't wait for 2018, man, and that's only a few days away, and we got a, We're gonna be doing a lot of that. Have you finished? Cool beer. Cool beer is coming Cold up soon. Cool beer is coming. Uh, we're this next year, so we're Cool Beer will be back at least twice. Two giant DC events and Cool Beer is uh, just about to come up. Must be an alignment of the planets. Yeah, well, guaranteed you're gonna have Cool Beer twice because we're gonna have uh he'll be on episode 175 and episode 200 because next year we will be hitting the 200th episode of this show. Long, That's right. I mean, we're gonna about to hit longer than most television sitcoms. <laughs> That's right. We we will have hanging in there. We refuse to die. We will have more episodes than than most of Marvel comics have issues over the last decade. Right. That is that is insane to think about. We're gonna have a lot of commentary tracks. Have you finished uh, the Devil's a Part Timer yet? I haven't finished. I've got uh, got a couple episodes left here, and uh, I I need to 
Uh, I'm probably not gonna do it tonight because this room right here gets really, it's like below zero and this room is really <laughs> fucking cold. That's why he's got a scarf on. Yeah, I've got a scarf and a coat on. <laughs> and, uh, and a little tiny heater right here to make this room warmer, but it is cold as fuck in here, so. Uh, but, but we do need to get together and have a meeting here while you're off, uh, to figure out how we're gonna shoot the, uh, the review and oh, all yeah, that. Oh yeah, definitely. Because I've been watching, uh, one I think you'll like. It's called, uh, Is It Wrong to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? <laughs> See, I'm telling you, uh, weirder the better, I guess. If, if you're gonna make me watch it, uh, the weirder the better. This one is good. This at least, good. Cause, well, this one, the one I'm watching now, I, I don't really have anything bad to say. I don't have anything funny to say about it because it's it's pretty cool. The only, like I said uh, last time I talked about it, the only thing I could say is every once in a while that dubbing gets annoying. It just it it really it bugs yeah. me sometimes. I've been working on uh, rewriting scripts for video game reviews. Um, I've got ideas in my head of how I'm going to do it. It's just getting the editing down. I have isolated the opening track for uh, for the re- for the reviews, our opening song for Renegade Gaming, which was created by our good friend Levi, who also did the original, who also did the uh, Nerd Rage Renegades theme song. Um, and I've been doing gameplay footage, capturing. Gameplay yeah, you have footage. a new theme song? I, I I haven't heard the new one. Have you, have you uh, it's, the it Rene- it's the Renegade Gaming one. It's the theme song for Renegade Gaming. Uh, it's the one I've actually used it. I want to say when we did the unboxing, I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. It's uh, it's cool. It's it's like he did it for me maybe like a year or two ago. I'm sure that I had to have heard it because you would have yeah, definitely yeah, you would sure have sent it to me. Yeah, it's um, it's like it sounds like a Genesis game. It, it, the way he did it and the way I told him about it, he made it really sound like it, it's like a theme song you could have heard on like a Sega Genesis game. It's really really good. I'll send it to you. Um, but I've been working on that, working on some stuff. Uh, of course, the, doing some gameplay footage. Uh, Goat Simulator is up on the YouTube. It's about 30 minutes or so of me just fucking around on Goat Simulator. No no audio, because I don't have a headset yet, but um, just some real funny goat slamming into multiple shit action. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> what have they got in it? Like, how many different properties? Are they, the real turtles are in it? You can, like, really... Uh, the, the they're real not, Ninja Turtles? They're, well, it's supposed like to be... Like, knockoff Grand Turtles? It's knockoff... It's, it's guys in, like, green sweat suits with, like, masks... Like, colored masks on, but they're in a sewer. <laughs> they're in the sewer. And they're dancing. Oh, okay. And, like, so it's, like, you, just a hint at... Yeah, it's, it's, like a, a, hint it's, a, it's a hint at the turtles. But when you start attacking them, they start, like, attacking you with, like, kicks and punches. <laughs> but you can't stop the goat. The goat's like fucking all powerful. The fuck. And, and what's really funny is like the goat can lick things. So like I can lick people and drag them around town, and you know, or uh, it, it's hilarious. Like there's a it, it, the 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 game. I first found the game because James and Mike played it on James and Mike Monday, the Goat Simulator game, and I was dying laughing while watching them play that, and I had to get it. I was watching gameplay of Gang Beasts. Djibouti was doing Gang Beasts, and that game looks fun too. Because they're like like weird like floppy jelly people, and you wrestle. Oh, you know what? We haven't talked about it yet. I don't think you've gotten it yet. But the, the new Resident Evil downloadable content is out. Oh no, you played it. I no, I haven't got it yet. Oh, yeah. I've so got there, are, to there there's two different uh, downloadable contents. I I've played one. I haven't played the End of Zoe, um, but I've seen the End of Zoe, and it's really really good. But I've played the Not a Hero downloadable content. So there, so uh, December twelfth, uh, Capcom released two DLCs for Resident Evil Seven, which uh, Chief and I reviewed at length on this show, which we loved. Resident Evil Seven. Yeah, it's a good game. Great game. So you get two downloadable contents. The first one. I'd go so far as to say it brought the franchise back from from Doom. Definitely. So the first one is it's like thirteen bucks. You got to buy it. It's called The End of Zoe, and it tells what happened to Zoe. Um, because in the game, there's a part where you have your wife, Mia, and you have Zoe, and you can see which one you want to give the cure to. Um, yeah, yeah. And one, it leads you to the good ending, one leads you to the bad ending. Uh, which, if you pick Zoe, it's the bad ending. So this tells what happens after you gave Mia the cure and rode off. This tells you what happened to Zoe. And it introduces another member of the Baker family, <laughs> which is uh, Jack's brother. And this dude is a badass, man. This dude's a motherfucking badass. He is fucking amazing. Um, but then the other one, which is free, it's a free download, which I love that. I love that Capcom said we're gonna here's a there's a content you have to buy, but we're also gonna give you a free downloadable content game. You know, we're gonna give you the not a hero, which you take you take control of Chris Redfield, 
Yeah. And it is Chris Redfield, and you're going after Luke Baker. So it, remember, in the game, you took out Jack, you took out Marguerite, uh, but you never really caught Lucas. So right. this one is Chris going after Lucas, and he's in the mines, and it is it is so good. Uh, Chris has a shotgun, he's got a handgun, he's got a knife, he's got grenades. Got a shotgun. He's got a <laughs> shotgun. <laughs> What? What is this? You were almost a Jill sandwich. Um, but, it's, I mean, I was playing it, and literally you feel claustrophobic when you're playing it because you're in the mines, and the, the hallways, or the, the corridors you have to go through are so narrow at some point. Well, that's, like the, that's, how the game, that's how the game should be. It should be. So, But it's really good, and it's also one of those, Chief, when you do play it, it's one of those, like, like we love that. It's kind of like... You can stay and fight and use your ammo, or you can run and conserve your ammo because you're going to need it later. I think it's like the perfect blend of, like the like, like the later Resident Evil started. It was almost like it became like Tomb Raider with monsters in it. Yeah. And and then like this this one really got back to being really freaking freaking you out and <laughs> messing with your head. Oh, this one is so freaking you fucking out. Uh, cause there's like new types of molded that can only be taken out with like a certain type of bullet. Um, you know, and I mean, it's just waves and waves and waves coming after Chris Redfield and he just stands his own and fucking takes him <laughs> out. And it does end back at the mansion. It ends back at the Baker. Um, they give you enough ammo. Why do you get all your ammo? The Say again? Big ammo, drop, the big ammo drops everywhere. Well, there's like different ammo, you know, it's just scattered around these mines. You know, like handgun bullets, shotgun shells. Um, but it ends really, really... Uh, actually, no, no, no. The end of Zoe ends back at the house. This one, you actually, I think, find the... Like a hidden installation where they had kept Evelyn for a time. And you actually see, like, the room they kept her in. Yeah. And, dude, it's fucking fucked up. It is so fucked up. But it is... Uh, some oh, man, I hate that character. Yeah. I hate that... <laughs> I wanted to push that old lady like into a hole so many times. And there's a girl talking to Chris like the whole time. Uh, now I don't know if maybe it's Jill or somebody else talking to him on their headset because they never tell you. Um, but they they discuss that you know they're now like Umbrella's under new management. Umbrella brought them in. And, um, you know, they're trying to turn things around. But then there's another... Uh, you there's get a little bit of that at the very end of the game. When you yeah. Beat, when you beat Seven, you, he comes in, like, right at the very end. And there, then there's, like, uh, Luke is working... Lucas is working for, like, this other corporation that wants the information on, like, Evelyn and the, the, wep, the, the bio weapons and things like that. So, really, I mean, a really good... It was great to get back into that world because... We bought the game. We beat it in like a day or two, and yeah, that, that's the Resident Evil's always been a, a franchise. No matter which one, like the, when the new one comes out, I always get it, and then I I play it until I beat it, and I just don't stop. <laughs> that's, a, that's one of the only games that I'm like that with because they're they're long play games, and I just get so immersed in it, I don't want to get out. It's like the Batman Arkham games. Like I can get immersed. Yeah, in that was too. I get stuck in those for a long time too. And I got and I get to go back and replay Arkham Knight because I had to tra remember I had to trade in my old PS4 because it was glitching. Got a new PS4, which means all my gameplay was gone. So yeah. I get to go back through and play all of Arkham Knight again. <laughs> uh, and then of course this big honking motherfucker right here. I'm gonna play this is a full on Japanese RPG. It's probably taking me like freaking eighty and a hundred hours to even figure out oh. what the hell I'm doing. Uh, one of, one of the things I just remembered that that Resident Evil uh, Seven was cool too was that at the very beginning when you first get to the house, when you walk on that path, and a couple of times in the house, somebody walk somebody will walk by like the end of the path. You just see somebody walk by, just like a, somebody just walks in front of you at a normal face, and then you run after them and they're gone. It's like the, there's like weird like ghosts in the game. <laughs> It's, and it really gets unnerving, man. You see, like somebody there, and you run, and it's like you just saw a ghost in the game. It's it's, it's insane. I love it. I love horror themed games. And the old lady, like you'll be crawling down under the house and shit in like a crawl space, and then there's the old lady in a wheelchair, just 
weird shit to throw you off. Like, like what what the hell is this old woman doing under here? And that's the thing. Like, I, you'd be running from, like, you'd be, like, almost out of ammo, so you'd run away from, like, the molded. You go into a room, and there's creepy old granny just in that room, and you can't yeah. shoot granny. You cannot. Hey, you can't do anything to her. You can't even touch her. You can't do anything with her. And it, she's just there. But no matter where you move in, like, the room, like, her head, like, lolls from one side to the other, like, yeah, following it's... your movement. <laughs> And I love that because it, it kind of it put you back. Like I, that's why I love the first one because you were stuck in that mansion, and this was kind of the same way. You were stuck in that house for so long. The first part of the game. Well, and, Resident Evil Two was cool too because the moans and stuff like behind doors, you just hear stuff moaning behind the door. You didn't know exactly yeah. what was what you were gonna face when you opened that door. Could have been a hundred zombies. Could have been one or two. And the um. Some, or they'll be lurking around on the floor and jump up and grab you out of nowhere or something. And, yeah, and they are doing a remake of Resident Evil uh, 2. Yeah, see, I that's I want to play that. If they, if they make a like a cool remastered Xbox One version of it, I want to play it. Yeah, so um, I mean, there's a I know on PlayStation Store there's the they have the remake of Resident Evil One, is on there. And hopefully they're gonna change like a lot of the puzzles and shit, so it's not the same fucking game. Re- right. Just repeat it. Hope it's not because I, I mean I could. I beat that game a few times. I, I could probably run through Resident Evil 2 pretty quick. So probably. hopefully it's, it's hopefully it's a little different. But uh, we're looking at uh, I'm looking I'm trying to look right here because they say uh, do, 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 do. Um, that there is a release date at least uh, for it. I I I kind of liked all of them. Five was kind of weird and kind of racist <laughs> I think it was five the one where you're just killing African villagers for most of the game yeah that's weird. that's a, that that one that that's where it started to get to be like just Tomb Raider with mutants in it and shit and it started getting away from what made it a horror game I think I thought four was pretty good there were still some creepy elements to four like some of the foggy areas and stuff but and they are saying that a uh, that Resident Evil 8 is already uh, in the works Fantastic! Like I hope they branch off and do some weird shit with it, because I thought seven was great. And stay on that path, but change it up a little bit so it's, you know, it's Definitely. and keep it keep it survival horror. One of the things I like best about it too is that you start out with nothing. You yeah, you like, have absolutely nothing. You, you just have to run for your life, and then it's basically it's it's insane. It's it's really scary. It really scares the shit out of you when you play it. And that's the thing, 2018 is going to have, I think 2018 is going to be a good year for video game uh, topics on this show, because we're going to have Call of Cthulhu at some point. Yeah, I'm, that's, I'm really excited about that, because I'm a huge Lovecraft fan, and I've always thought that that was a, a property that's been, that you see influences of Lovecraft in other games, like you see, you see a lot, like in Warcraft and other stuff, you, you see, but you haven't, there hasn't been like a direct Lovecraft game in, in in his universe that's been done well. No, at I mean least. you have and, and this is I'm really looking forward to. I mean you've had a couple you I think on the original Xbox there was a couple Call of Cthulhu games. Um but this one, the one that's gonna be coming out next year, um it's it's Call of Cthulhu um let's see it's the official video game. So this one is official. The trailer I've seen is pretty fucking amazing, man. That's yeah. That's what. And it's gonna be dark. It's gonna be uh, creepy. And the, just that thing that it says the official game means to me that they got you know they they've got the blessing of the Lovecraft estate. Yeah, it must. Have been, yeah, I would I would assume that if it says that it's official. Yeah. So that's gonna be good. Uh, on PS4, I mean, I'm getting the Spider-Man game. Which looks like it looks like Spider-Man. Which is exclusive, Arnold. I believe, uh, from what I understand. At least right away, it's exclusive, yep. and that sucks because <laughs> yeah. I want to play it real bad. So that's gonna be really cool. I'm a, I can't wait to play that one. God of War is coming out. I'm a huge fan of the God of War series because I loved yeah. all the, the the Greek mythology in it. But this one is moving Kratos from Greece into the Norse mythology. So you're going to have the Norse. I, uh, I might just go out and get a PS4 here in the next couple months. Just you so you might some... have to, man. And then we can get then we can play like online together Goat Simulator. 
Well, yeah, no, yeah. Well, that's one thing we could play games together, and then I would rather have it, if Kingdom Hearts three ever does come out. I would rather have it next on PlayStation year. anyway. Next year. Next I know year. it's going to be on every every console, but I would I kind of would rather play it on PlayStation. Just because I played all the other ones on PlayStation. It's, that was it's... my whole thing with Kingdom Hearts. It's like, they're like, oh, like, somebody at work was like, you should get an Xbox One because you can play this. I'm like, well, they're like, oh, but Kingdom Hearts is coming out on that. But I'm like, yes, but I'm so used to playing Kingdom Hearts on a PS, on a PlayStation. Well, I'm thinking because I spent out. so many hours playing the other ones that I would just kind of well, get it with the yeah. cut, with the controller and everything. It would be Well, then if you, if you go out in the next couple of months, you get yourself a PS4 you can go ahead and pick up all the remastered editions of Kingdom Hearts for your PS4. I'd like to play them again. That'd because, be fun. so you, they have Kingdom Hearts, they have like, they, there's, there's like two that you would want to get. The first one, it's it has Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, which is the full game, uh, plus all the extras that the Japanese uh, version got in, but it's still American. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 2, you get Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts uh, 360 something days, and then you get Recoded, and you get Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep, which was actually the prequel to Kingdom Hearts, um, which is really good. That one is that one was originally for the PSP, and basically you play as three characters. Uh, there's three different scenarios you play as, and you can. You play as one character, you beat that character, then you go in, and then you can play as the other char- the other two characters, you know, so you get the whole story. But they actually allow you to go to, like, Cinderella's world, you go to Snow White's world, Sleeping Beauty's world, um, Disney Town, Radiant Garden before it was destroyed. You get to see younger versions of all the characters, so, like, the Organization 13 before they became nobodies, you get to see them. There's um, there's one thing that that they better make sure they better make sure that three is just kick ass over the top like the coolest fucking game ever because everybody's been waiting on this thing for so long and the other ones are so good and 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 they're re- and another thing that I like about them is they're also really long play games you really have to get into it and oh, play definitely. it for a long time. So with Kingdom Hearts and uh, so that three better just knock your socks off or people are gonna be pissed. Well, with Kingdom Hearts three, the worlds that have been announced so far is you're gonna get a world based off of Tangled with Rapunzel, where Rapunzel will actually be a playable character in your party. Um, and they said that they said that they really enjoy that because she uses her hair and she can like whip her hair all around and take out enemies and slam them into walls and stuff with her hair. It's really cool. Um, there's a whole world based on Toy Story, and you get shrunk down to a toy. So you know, you, usually in Kingdom Hearts, like if you went to like the Little Mermaid, you turn into like sea creatures. Yeah. This one you turn into a toy. So everything is toy. You know, like, you're in the house, the bed is huge. You know, you go outside, you fight in the grass, and the grass is huge with you as a toy. Yeah. Um, and on that one, you get Buzz and Woody to join your party. So you get two characters to join you. Um, there's a world based on Big Hero 6, where you'll get Baymax. And recently, somebody leaked, and they said they're not sure if it's official or not, um, but there might be a world based on Frozen. Now... I would think so. I would, I think, would think by now. Now, here's the reason why I would actually not mind that. The ice powers, that'd be badass to have in, in Yeah, Kingdom have Elsa join your party. Let Elsa be the playable character in your party. Oh, she'd be my first choice. If I Where, had her as a oh, pick. yeah, where she can just, like, like, like her sister, no, not she had nothing really cool. Give me, no. the, give me the chick that can, like, give me Ice Woman that can, like, shoot ice and shit. That would be cool. Oh, yeah. Um, and then the new moves, like, the new, like, super moves are based off of Disney rides. So like like the teacups or the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad shit like that giant giant fucking like pirate ship you can like fly through <laughs> things I mean just really awesome stuff so that I'm looking for they said there's not going to be any worlds based on Final Fantasy which I kind of don't like because yeah. that's what I loved about Kingdom Hearts in the first place was it was a mixture of Final Fantasy and well, that's why I bought it, because it was, it was just weird. I thought, what a weird-looking game. And I yeah. bought it, and I just loved it, and then I played the second one. And, and, and they were, like, weirdly dark, too. They weren't, like, they weren't like these happy, kitty Disney games. They're, they had the happy Disney characters in them, but they were weirdly dark games yeah. that, now, that it, took you to other dimensions. And, and they were, like, one of the things I do like about Kingdom Hearts, too, is it's 
it's like multiple games in one because you get the one game where you can build your spaceship up and fly yeah. it through the. So there's like a shooting game. There's like uh, puzzles. There's fighting. There's like and big and boss battles. It's like every kind of game you can want. See, and that's why I think you would like uh, Birth by Sleep is because you had the main game, but then there's a thing called the Command Board, which is basically a board game. Like you're playing a board game. And that helps you, like, beef up your magical powers or your fighting powers. Yeah, well, that's, like, with the keys, too. That's another thing I like is you can you can rearrange all the properties of your keys and make them, like, super – your keyblades and make them, like, super yeah. powerful. I can't wait. I love it. I've been playing it, like I said. And then there's another one that's out um, that you get this it, – it's a short – like, this one has – I think it has Dream Drop Distance, which was for the 3DS. But, of course, it's made now for the, for the PlayStation. But you also get a short – story of aqua in the dark world which also takes place it takes place during kingdom hearts the original kingdom yeah. hearts the dark world is such a weird that shit through the mirror with mickey and then the black and white mickey and it's fucking got really dark in parts oh, man this one is like the dark world and this one it's like the dark world it like the world you're in is Cinderella's world and it's Cinderella's world has not come back from the dark world yet it's still a destroyed world so you're going through, like, the destroyed Cinderella world. Yeah, it's that was, fucking... like, the creepiest part of the second one. And everything was all fucked up and, it's and amazing. dark. And black and white. It's and, and since it's not on the PS4, it's got the updated graphics and the HD. Is uh, it the first one or the second one where you fight the darkness, like, on that weird platform that, like, moves? And, like, it's, like, the weird... You know, like, the, then the doors appear on it, and then you got to fight, um, like, the... The darkness in between to get to the door or something, and you gotta. I think that's the first one. I know the first one. The the I, the first one, the worst fucking fight. The one that I had a lot of trouble with was Chernabog. The the dude from Fantasia, the big demon from Fantasia. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 okay, yeah. That dude was a was fucking massive. Yeah, that took me forever to, to beat that guy. But the, once you, but there's he's got a pattern on it, and once you figure out what to do, that it, it's not that hard. Oh, Birth by Sleep has some cool ones. So there's one battle where you team up with Prince Philip to take on Maleficent in her dragon form. Um, then there's one where you get sucked into the magic mirror from Snow White, and you have to defeat the the spirit of the mirror. Uh, so that one's pretty cool. Um, then there's fights like one of the levels is the alien ship from Stitch. It's like before Stitch landed in Hawaii. It's on the alien ship, <laughs> and you get to go through that. Uh, of course, as in every uh, Kingdom Hearts, you have a level based on Hercules, because that's like the constant. Um, Disney Town's pretty cool because you know in the, in the first one you got to see, or the second one you got to see the castle. This one you get to see the town around the castle. Um, and everybody's there, like horse, horse collars there, Pete's there. Yeah. Um, then you get, oh, you get like a, almost like open world. Yeah. Kind of thing. Uh, and then there's, that's a, cool. Cause that, that would get, sometimes you run into places you couldn't go in Kingdom Hearts too. That get, that would get frustrating. And there is a level based on Neverland. And there's a part, like after you do a couple things, there's a part where you're going through, but Hook's, uh, ship is in the background and it just keeps shooting cannonballs. No matter where you go, it's shooting cannonballs at you. So you have to fight Heartless, uh, or in this game they're called Unversed, while trying to dodge all the, the cannonballs from uh, from Hook's ship. And the voice acting is really, really good. It's really good. And, and oh, yeah, Johnny Hunt, Depp did the, didn't he do the second one. Johnny Depp did voices for uh, nope, Jack Sparrow. No, he, uh, somebody else did Jack Sparrow in that one. But uh, but in this one, in Birth by Sleep, this is the one I told you, you get uh, Mark Hamill and you get, uh, before his passing, Leonard Nimoy. All right. <laughs> Let's do Spock. It's so cool, though, because Mark Hamill is playing one of the Keyblade Masters in this game, and he's constantly talking about the light and the darkness and how the dark you don't want to let the darkness take you over because this, like, this, he'll, he even mentions, like, you know, this leads to the darkness. And it's so cool because it's kind of like, you know, it, it's like he's talking as a Jedi. It, it's like the Keyblade wielders are an anagram for the Jedi. But then you have and lo and behold, Disney vice Star yes. Wars. And then you have then you have Leonard Nimoy who's playing the bad Keyblade Master. So it's like Star Trek versus Star Wars. You know, <laughs> it, it's so good. It is so good. I can't wait for Kingdom Hearts three next year. I can't wait for Spider Man, God of War. 
the new Sword Art Online game, Fatal Bullet, comes out next year. I'm getting that because I'm a huge fan of Sword Art Online. Uh, just so much, you know, that that's going to be coming out. It's it's amazing. Hopefully in the new year I'll get a Nintendo Switch. I'll be able to do that. Oh, God, I am so looking forward to a new year, Chief. 2017 has been amazing, but I can't wait for a new year. I know, and we got movies coming out too. We got like Black Panther and uh, like uh, what is it? Infinity. Infinity out soon. Oh, Infinity Wars coming out uh, next year for movies. Holy shit! They've announced Punisher season two is coming sometime. Daredevil season three. Yeah, the Punisher series was damn good, man. Um, like, they've announced Jessica Jones season two. Yeah. Uh, uh, Luke Cage. Well, we know Luke Cage is coming too because they already got production. And Iron Fist. To Iron Fist season two has been announced. Uh, Chief, you're getting a new Insidious movie coming out here in just another yeah, week. I, I, I kind of like those movies. <laughs> I get into them. Yeah. You know what I thought? They they missed the boat, though, because I don't know if this, this new one's like a prequel or what what's the deal with it. I thought the end of uh, the, what, the second one, I think, is uh, the, the old lady dies, right? And and, uh, and one of them, at the end of the movie, like the little uh, after the, the main story is over, the little after thing is... The two guys go. That's the two uh, paranormal investigators are just by themselves, and they show up at this house. And the old lady is now a ghost that actually travels with them, like a la Slimer Ghostbusters <laughs> kind of a thing. And I thought that would be an interesting way to continue the Insidious movies. Have these two goofball paranormal investigators with the actual real psychic lady ghost that travels with them and actually does everything. So. All right, so Insidious Three was a prequel. Um, is what it's saying here. So Insidious Three was the prequel. Then you had, uh, apparently, from what this is saying, is the newest one, which is called Insidious: The Last Key. It is the fourth installment in the franchise and the second in terms of story of the series in story chronology. Uh, chronolo- in canon um so let's see here apparently it's saying that uh so you had number you had insidious you had insidious 2 insidious 3 was a prequel and then insidious the last key and the main character is the uh the old woman the uh yeah so if this is going to take place after the the events of the like the first time around because if, if three was a prequel right so the, yeah. if this is taking place after the second one then she's she's gonna be dead right she's gonna be a ghost throughout the movie because that's kind of how they set it up like after the, I think it was after what the second one I think they set it up to where she was dead already but she her spirit was still lingering around the two paranormal guys and they could like see her and communicate with her and she was actually solving all of their cases for them and they, they kind of set it up like that which that would have been kind of a cool interesting way to continue hopefully that's what they're going to do with this one if this one takes okay. place after so, that yeah so it says so it's insidious so insidious 3 this one takes place right after insidious 3 so it's before the first one okay it's, so yeah. before she died yeah so they got they they've still got the opportunity to do that, which I think would be a cool way to do it. Yeah. So you get that insidious, and that's like that's January fifth, chief. That's coming like, you know, next week. Right. Killing killing the old lady off was kind of a bad idea since they planned on doing more of these. Now they got to do everything's got to be a prequel. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting the final uh, edition of the Maze Runner series. Maze Runner: The Death Cure is coming out. Uh, I love that. Uh, that I can't series. believe how many of those movies. I can't believe they're still making those. I can't believe they're that popular. It yeah, seems like yeah. how, who, do people really go see them? I don't, you never it's like you never hear about them, but you hear about a new one coming out all the time. Well, shoot, we're getting another Fifty Shades movie next year. <laughs> yes, that's, like the, that's like Twilight. It's like you get like the first one, and everybody's like, "Oh, I can't wait to see it." But then you get the other ones, and everybody you never hear anything about the other ones. Everybody's just kind of like, "Eh." <laughs> You know, eh, whatever. We can't get a goddamn Moon Knight Netflix series. I know. We get <laughs> hey, we are getting Death Wish next year. Yeah, that's true. We're getting Death Wish with uh with Bruce Willis taking on taking on the the role of Buck uh, Gersey. <laughs> creep, hey creep. Uh, we're getting the new Tomb Raider film, which I saw the trailer for Tomb Raider. It looks pretty good. It looks like it's following the uh the reboot uh 
video game series. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I'll I'll probably catch it at some point, but it's like it's, I'm not excited about that really. I'm just uh, I just I don't like I, I like Tomb Raider. Like I played a couple of them, but it's like I don't really care yeah. about the series that much. Pacific Rim Uprising. I do want to see that because I like I like the first one of those a lot. And it's got and it's got Charlie Day in it again. Yeah. And uh, the the that was just a cool. You you can't go wrong with monsters and giant robots. I'm gonna be watching that no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ready Player One looks fantastic. That's a new one by Steven Spielberg based on the book Ready Player One. Yeah, that's that's another one. I'm not so sure that I. Uh, that's probably one I'll wait for to watch at home. I probably watch mo- most movies I watch at home, but I mean there's there's a few I do will will go out and watch. I know you're gonna go see the Wes Anderson movie Isle of Dogs, the one where all the dogs were moved to a, like an island. They all all the dogs live on an island now, and a human shows up looking for his lost dog, and the dogs have to help him. I probably would watch that. <laughs> Listen, man, I I love dogs. I know. all dogs. I want to see Sherlock gnomes. That's one I want to see. I I like Nomeo and Juliet. I Det- what about Sherlock Detective Holmes. Pikachu? That's that's kind of oh out. everybody's gonna see Detective Pikachu. I mean that you you go see that one right before you go see Tyler Perry's Acrimony. <laughs> you gotta see you gotta see another you gotta see another Tyler Perry movie. I mean shoot, they're David A R White's doing another God's Not Dead movie. Oh, hey hey, Tyler Perry did make another Medea Halloween. That I got. I know. I still I still haven't seen the first Medea Halloween. I want to. Uh, I gotta see. I gotta wait oh, for the second. Yeah, I'll wait. You know what we're getting next year? Super Troopers two. Oh yeah, it'll, it'll take them long enough. This guy's gonna be like sixty. <laughs> It'll still be funny though. Super Troopers two will still be funny. You're getting a like we said, Avengers: Infinity War is coming out next year. Uh, I kind of want to see Slender Man. Yeah, I don't know about that. I haven't, I haven't heard anything. Uh, 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 Deadpool. If, 2? if it's a cool, if, yeah, Deadpool two. Uh, I saw a movie that's pretty, that's kind of cool. It's like an independent uh, horror movie, but you can you can get it on uh, on demand right now. It, it was made in, uh, I think it's on uh, Amazon actually, but uh, it's uh, it was made in 2013. But I've just now recently heard of it. But it's it's a it's a fictional account. It's it's a it's a horror movie, uh-huh. but it's a, it's a fictional account of what happened at the Skinwalker Ranch out in Utah. Oh, and uh, it's pretty. It's like a found footage like horror movie. Uh, in real life, nobody really died at that place, but there are some really weird things about that. That's right. You had told place. me about that. You, you had sent me a message. It's just like, how much do you know about Skinwalker Ranch? And I had to look it up. Yeah, uh, I would recommend anybody that, like, that likes the found footage horror stuff uh, to watch that movie and then maybe go look up the, like the real place because a lot of the stuff in the movie is uh, uh, not necessarily how it happened in real life or whatever, or how right. it was reported, but... It's been exaggerated for horror movie purposes, but I mean, a lot of really fucking weird shit went on out in Utah, and to the point that like a scientific research facility was built there, and they were actually studying it for a while. And uh, so that, that that that's just a little recommendation for everybody out there if you got Amazon Prime, or if you can find it somewhere else, uh, you might be able to pick it up on a streaming service somewhere. Uh, Ant Man and Wasp is out next year. Yeah, I kind of want to see that. Uh, I'm just like, ah, I, I know, know you want to see the new. Uh, there's another Purge movie coming out. I know you want to go see another Purge movie. Uh, no. All right. <laughs> no. What about now? This one, this next one, I really do want to see Hotel Transylvania Three: Summer Vacation. I do. I like the Hotel Transylvania movies. I think they're funny and they're cute. Uh, I definitely want to see that one. And of course, Chief and I will both be there to see Mamma Mia. Here we go again. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm already, I'm camping out for that one. Yeah, we're gonna be we're gonna be singing our ABBA. We're gonna get out there like uh, 36 hours before the doors open for that. <laughs> for the uh, tent. There is one coming out, Chief. Uh, Teen Titans Go to the movies. I will I will go see that. I you know what I don't understand all the hate for that cartoon because I fucking love it. I think I it's think, I think it's. You know, you had the first Teen Titans series, which was amazing, but then they kind yeah, of really took it down with Teen Titans Go. I think that's where a lot of people have an issue. Well, with. a lot of people are still a lot of people are still salty over Young Justice getting canceled. Yeah. And and this was the replacement for it. Although Young Justice season three is supposed to be coming out on Netflix, and uh, Teen Titans Go, you, you need to give it a break because it is the funniest shit. To me, it rem, it rem, seriously reminds me. Of a little bit of like a kid version of Always Sunny in Philadelphia for Cartoon Network, 
because they portray the Teen Titans as just despicable assholes to each other. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're just dicks. And, uh, oh, man, the, the episode where they decide that they're tired of cleaning up supervillain messes, so they decide they're going to be supervillains, and they hire their own goons, and, and uh, Robin becomes Dick Gravestone. It's like every every time I see that, I can't stop laughing. It's, I I love it, and there's so many references to DC Comics and like old school references, like even to like Crisis and weird shit like that. Flashpoint, like throw out old references to to DC stuff, even like Justice Society, weird like <laughs> Justice Society references and shit. And uh, I think it's brilliant and funny, and I don't I don't get a, people that give give it a chance, everybody. If you don't like Teen Titans Go, watch it again and give it a chance because it's really funny. Don't let your young justice hatred cloud your your uh, your mind. We're getting um, we're getting uh, another Predator movie next year. Yeah, and it's written by uh, the guy that's actually in the first Predator. I think Shane Black is is one yeah. of the guys that's in. Uh, he's the guy with the glasses. I think that's one of the guys in Arnold's crew in in, in the first Predator. Yeah, I think he's like the first guy to die. Yeah, he was Hawkins. Yeah, he was in the first one. So uh, that'll actually, I, I'm looking, they say it takes place between Predator 2 and Predators. Yeah, well, I know Jake Busey's in it, because he's been talking about it. And then to the star, Jake, I think, really, Jake Busey's going to be the star of it? Well, I, well actually, says <laughs> I hope the, you got somebody else. Well, Jake Busey's in it, but uh, it's, it's starring uh, Boyd Holbrook and Olivia Munn. And and I'm sorry, any, I love Olivia Munn. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> Psylocke, baby. I want an original, like, there are so many cool Predator stories from the Dark Horse comics and stuff, and some, like, yeah. the, the, the history of the Predators and their history with the aliens and all that weird shit. Like, I wish they, were, they could find, like, a happy medium between that and, like, like the cinematic, uh, and, and the, like, the cool uh, Man Against Predator style of, of the first movie. Like, somehow find a balance of that and kind of make it bigger, more epic universe for Predator. But still keep it good. But I don't know. It, it, Predator movies are hit, hit and miss unless they do it right. Because I've read a lot of the Predator comic books for, from Dark Horse, and there, there'd be, it'd be nice to see some of that shit kind of get into these movies. Uh, we're getting uh, next year. I mean, next year you're, you're getting a new Predator movie. You're getting a brand new Scarface movie that they say is neither a reboot or a remake. It's its own independent story about someone who becomes a kingpin of crime. Uh, we're getting a new Robin Hood movie. We're getting a, 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 a kids' film based off of Arthurian legend. Oh boy! You know what? I don't think there, there ever will be. There might be a, a decent Robin Hood movie. Nobody's ever going to be the Arrow Flynn Robin Hood. That's that's my. That's what I think of as Robin Hood. Whenever I hear the name Robin Hood, I think I of think Arrow of, Flynn as Robin. Hood. I think of a fox. <laughs> or that. Probably that one seriously. Films. That would be my second choice. That's a good one. The, the original Errol Flynn uh, Robin Hood is my favorite version of that, and always will be. And uh, as far as cartoons, yeah, the the Fox, the Disney cartoon Robin, is, yeah. is number two. Uh, Halloween next year, we're getting a new Halloween movie. I want to see that. I That's do because there's a lot of hype about it, and John yeah. Carpenter's involved. So yeah. And then X Men Dark Phoenix is next year. So it's gonna be uh, that one, that's, that one goes. that's weird. It's it's this is a weird time with this merger with uh, with yeah. Disney now and everything going on. So uh, we'll see what happens. It's gonna be weird considering also next year we're getting that animated um, Miles Morales Spider Man movie. Yeah, have you seen the the animation for that? Looks terrible from what I've seen. If that's the real animation for it, I, I hope it gets improved because it doesn't I think look that that's good. That's the real animation, but I think they're they're going with something weird on it. They're going with some with a really weird type. Uh, I've just name. seen a couple of images out of context, so I can't really say. But I'm just looking at what I've seen, it's like that. That kind of looks terrible. I hope they put more money into it than this. Yeah. So we got all those coming out, uh, and a new Wreck It Ralph movie next year. Chief, we're getting another Wreck It Ralph. All right. Ralph breaks the internet. Wreck It Ralph two. I can't wait for that. I love Wreck It Ralph. I think Wreck It Ralph is That's a great. That's weird. Movie. What what movies of those they decide to make sequels to? Because I would have never thought they'd make a sequel to that. I love it. Ever. Uh, this one says taking place six years after the event of the first film, the story will center on Ralph's adventures in the internet data space when a Wi-Fi when a Wi-Fi router gets plugged into the arcade, as he must find a replacement part to fix Sugar Rush. 
Along the way, Ralph and his <laughs> best friend Vanilla B. Von Schweetz encounter new customs, worlds, and characters, such as the, such as the trendy algorithm Yes and the Disney princesses. So you're going to get the Disney princesses in there. You're going to get... Uh, uh, I mean, literally, t- uh, they're getting, bringing back all of them, dude. I just, I just think it's weird that that gets the sequel that soon since the like the first one just came out. Not, I mean, it's been a couple of years, but I mean, it's been not, not that long. But like, it took it for this long to finally get, and it's not even out yet. Incredibles two it was just just announced, and we're just now seeing stuff about it. So, well, this one it's, it's just says, odd that it took so long to do that. It also says in here that C three PO, R two D two, Yoda, and Princess Leia from Star Wars, as well as Iron Man and Gamora from Marvel Comics, will appear in the new Wreck It Ralph movie. Your microphone's off, bro. What the hell was that? I don't know. Uh, uh, and Disney buying everything's just making everything weird. <laughs> this is gonna, everything's just going to be weird crossovers. Pretty much. <laughs> well, I don't, here's a, uh, that's fine as long as that's like you, you know give the fans that have been with this shit what the, you know keep giving them their <laughs> their fix of what they want you can do whatever you want I suppose but I mean it's like a, I, I too much of that gets on my nerves I mean I hate I I, I really don't like like when they mix two things together <laughs> that, that don't belong i don't know i don't it's just weird to me i hate when they when the, there's like crossovers like that but that's just me i guess well let's switch gears here because of the 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 time of the uh, time of the hour and let's talk about some dc comics so let's hit that spoiler alert chief all right spoiler alert spoiler alert the renegades are about to spoil this week's dc comics so we're going to be talking about DC Comics. We're going to be talking about comics for the next two weeks, actually, because we got uh, the next two weeks' worth of books. Now, some of them we'll be able to talk about at length, but others we're, yeah. we're not going to be able to give you any spoilers. Well, fortunately, Spin, uh, when you told me that earlier, I, it can kind of confuse me. And then I remembered that they'd sent us two weeks, and I haven't even read those books for the third yet. So. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I am on, I'm up on tonight's books, and I will be ready. Well, you ha- so you haven't read the- Metal yet. No, I have read metal. I've read metal. Uh, oh wait, metal. We've already gotten metal. We got metal last week. I mean, I meant um, Doomsday Clock. Well, no, Doomsday Clock's out this week. But yeah, uh, we could like, have... like Batman. Uh, that's not out till the next week. So no, and in, in the next, in the other file is like Batman, Superman. Uh, you know, some of the others. Like like this week, I think it was like Flash, Detective, Action, uh, Metal, are the ones that I read. Oh, and Hellblazer, I read this week. So let's start off talking about Doomsday Clock because, uh, damn. Yeah, it just gets crazier. <laughs> it really does get crazier. So they, the, they're basically saying the, so, the ending. I, I know I'm not gonna jump ahead with that. Oh man, the ending. The ending is just insane. I never would have thought you'd ever see that. I was hoping maybe for a different meaning, but that meaning is cool. So we're we're seeing. So they are kind of saying that Doctor Manhattan because of his thoughts of the world with the Watchmen, that he did go to another world to kind of be a hero in the in this other world. Yeah, and lo and behold, we find out that... Well, they first of all, they fix... Uh, uh, they fix up the... Uh, what is it? The Archimedes? What is that uh, the thing that the uh, Night Owl drives around? Yeah, the Owl that ship. They, or they, they, yeah, the Owl ship. They refit it with uh, uh, time and space travel capability. Uh, to get to this other place where Doc, where they think Doctor Manhattan is, and uh, so we we come to find out that that happens to be like the current like Earth Prime DC universe, which is really interesting. Them talking like Rorschach and uh, Ozymandias is talking about, you know, the differences between their world and superheroes and this world with superheroes. You know, talking about most of them actually do have powers. Yeah, and... did you think it was implied that Superman and Batman and those heroes were, were known fictional characters in the Watchmen universe? That's what it kind of sounds like to it, me. It would sound like it was implied, like, like John, because he says something about John knew these, or created these characters in this universe because they were fictional in ours or something like that. 
says something to that degree. So I was wondering if maybe the DC universe is is one of the fictional universes in the Watchmen universe. Maybe. Um, it, it's just so interesting because you get this dynamic of the Watchmen and what they thought of superheroes, and we still don't even know who this Rorschach is, honestly. Yeah, he's not the same as uh, the original Rorschach. Yeah, uh, but now they're here in this universe, and you get two different types of meetings. You get Ozymandias and Lex Luthor, but you also get Rorschach and Batman. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best, man. I love that part. Rorschach gets into Wayne Manor. First of all, he eats Bruce Wayne's breakfast, which is pancakes. Yeah. Finds his way into the Batcave. Like, immediately. Like, immediately knows where it is. <laughs> walks right to the clock. Just to, listens to the floor for a second, and then walks right to the clock. And I love that interaction. But it's like, Batman, like, normally Batman would, like, knock out anybody that comes into the Batcave. But he just looks at Rorschach and goes, you ate my breakfast. And Rorschach's like, yes, I did. <laughs> that's the best. I mean, once again, it's a it's it's an issue where it's still set up. We're still getting set up. We have it's not even anything like mind like we there is some mind blowing stuff, but it's a lot of still setup of this 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 whole event. Yeah, there's uh, well, I mean, so far uh, with the exception of now Batman and Lex Luthor, nobody's aware. That the Watchmen have come through. We also, uh, is it revealed that, uh, it's revealed that the comedian is, is around. He shows up during yeah, the meeting is, with yeah. Lex Luthor. Like, they don't know why he's alive. And, and it, we know it's him too because he said, last time you caught me unaware and I was drunk and now this time it's not going to go that way for you or something. And so we know it is the, the real comedian because he, he's aware of the last fight with Ozymandias. It's it's like I said. There's still so many unanswered questions on this, and then we didn't even get, you know, there was no Superman in this issue. We got a little bit of Superman at the end of the first issue, but we didn't get any this issue. So there's still that whole question of how does Superman tie into everything? And yeah, my theory still is that that Superman is Doctor Manhattan because we, if you still remember this, this Superman is not. A Superman from a universe anybody's been aware of. He just showed up after New 52 Superman died, and he just kind of showed up in our in, in this universe, and, and nobody really knows exactly where he came from. This could all be Doctor Manhattan that just blinked this family of him and then Lois into existence. Uh, we don't know. So uh, there is a lot of it's it's kind of a cool juxtaposition with this in metal. With the way Snyder throws everything at you, action-wise and story-wise, uh, uh, with you know even the kitchen sink you know hits you with it, uh, and and just it like metal just rips right into the story right away, and it's just hardcore. And Johns is is building this like it's it's slowly happening, and he's just dropping a little bit to you at a time. So it's like two two universe shattering events going on and and being written in two completely different styles and i mean that's all thing cuz they you know metal will come to, metal will will be finished around february time frame whereas they're saying doomsday clock it's going well into next year i mean we're not getting a swift resolution to this it's going to be around for a while well i would this is a, a kind of a big deal so i mean i would hope that they're not going to rush it no definitely not um, but, this is one like I got sick of Forever Evil. I'll admit that that took so long, and that event did. lasted for what almost two years it seemed like. And uh, I was like, God damn it, when is this gonna end? And uh, but with this, it's like I want this. I want this to be done right, and I want it. I want it to be given enough the, the amount of issues it needs to be done right. I don't care if it's twelve. I don't care if it's twenty or thirty, whatever. Definitely. Uh... I just need to, it's like, you finally get these two big properties, co you know, the Watchmen and the DC Heroes, it's, which one, like, even now, this one's out. Well, and the Sandman, and like, yeah. well, Sandman's coming into, into, uh, metal, but I mean, it, it's, it's, it, well, it's, it's all getting, like, confusing, too, to a degree, when you're reading two events that encompass the entire universe. Definitely. Um, and, and speaking of the other, so... With with Doomsday Clock, definitely it's another issue that's setting up quite a bit of uh, of what's gonna ha what's going on. 
But some really great reveals in this, some really great uh, interactions between like Ozymandias and Luther, and then Rorschach and um, Batman. The artwork is fantastic. Johns is creating something that is going to resonate for, for years to come, in my opinion. And the and the timing is is odd because we know we know Batman and then Batman is present during Doomsday Clock. He's not obviously he's not tied to the battery in the Dark Multiverse right. at this point. So this is taking place on some other time plane that that and I'm, I'm and that in itself makes me wonder how it's all going to tie together under Rebirth and and everything, or if it's just gonna if they're not if it's not going to tie in at all. I was just, I was thinking it, that all of this would tie in somehow eventually. Because there were little clues, it seemed that I that, that maybe I misinterpreted, but I was thinking it was gonna somehow metal and and uh, doomsday clock would tie in under rebirth in some kind of one major event. But I don't, I don't know; it doesn't look like it's gonna go that way now. It's it kind of it seems that way, and then it doesn't. It's weird. Well, with metal, we got another uh, tie-in this week with uh, Hawkman found. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I did read that one too. This one is it's it's one of those kind of like Batman Lost where it's more like interlude, more like what happened with everything. How did this yeah. kind of come about? It's me. It's Carter Hall at the at the the Forge, uh, kind of recounting and on that planet and recounting kind of what's going on, what, what, his story. While I guess assume while Metal is going on, what what happened to him, either right before the events of metal or maybe during before Superman and Batman got there or whatever. It's also a bit of him. It almost seemed to me like it was also, um, what was like, it's like his, like almost kind of like Bruce when he was fighting his own mind and Batman lost, you know, he knew. Yeah. That wasn't real. It's, it, yeah. It's, it, it's kind of seems like it's not really the, the book itself kind of seems like it's not really happening. It's kind of like the whole thing is something inside of Carter Hall's mind as he is the giant. Hawkman uh, monster at the forge. <laughs> yeah, uh, but like this is his will inside of that thing, fighting to regain control of himself. But um, you know, it was one, another issue that was very much uh, key to the overall story, especially with that what happened at the end of Metal Number Four, realizing that Carter Hall was at the forge. Yeah. I think it was perfect timing that you had, Mar and that's one of the things I'm loving about metal is the timing of the tie-ins, the timing of of these of these books is, you get metal number four, which at the end shows Carter Hall at the forge as this gigantic hawk beast. Yeah. Then they come out with this book, Hawkman Found, which gives you a little more insight of what is going on, and to the point that he they t they mention in there, you know, about Kendra. And things like that, and Carter Car Carter Hall doesn't know what's what's been happening on Earth. He doesn't know what's been happening in the world. He doesn't know what Kendra's been, what happened to Kendra in, in Metal Number Four. He just he's trying yeah. to like fight this entity that's you know his like it basically like every day he gets a little bit closer to retaking control, but he's ultimately pushed back down again at the end. And. Uh... Well, the, he, and he also talks a little bit about uh, all, through all of his lives and everything. Like, like he talks a little bit, uh, a little bit about his immortality in this too. And uh, yeah, it's uh, how it ties into all this. It's going to be like, like I've said before, Hawkman's always been one of my favorite heroes. But even when I was a kid, just the look of him. Just, <laughs> so I mean, I, I love that this whole event is kind of centered around Hawkman. And uh, and yeah, we'll see where it goes. It it this. Uh, one, I was going to say one of the things I really would would commend DC for uh, during Rebirth so far, Rebirth and and Metal and Doomsday Clock so far, all the tie-ins that have been uh, that are labeled tie-ins so far have all been important to the story. They haven't been they, they haven't been bullshit tie-ins. They've had something important like the Justice League ones. Those are pretty vital to what's going on in Metal. Uh, you you kind of have to read them. And, uh, you know, I mean, you don't have to. I mean, the main event's usually good enough. But, I mean, th these definitely are valuable supplemental books that, they're, that yeah. they're putting out. And it's, it's, not like, it's, it's not like it's like some of those false covers you see with, like, a stamp of this event, and then you, it has nothing to do with it. Like some of the, like some of the Marvel ones are, are like that once in a while with their events. And, 
And it's and that that pisses me off when I'm buying books that have nothing to do with the event I'm trying to read, and it's got the logo on it. But so far with DC, with with the uh, rebirth so far and all this shit, uh, everything's been pretty spot on as far as tie-ins. It has been, especially with metal, with all the tie-ins for like the Dark Knights and what. Yeah, how they all those. About. The Dark Knights are all worth it for sure. Get those if you haven't read them. They're definitely, and then like like Batman Lost, is one I would definitely say pick up because you're trying. You know, it helps you kind of figure out what Bruce is going through at, in the Battery and in the Dark Multiverse. Yeah, yeah. So. That was a that was one of one of my favorites. And uh, uh, Snyder said there's a hint at like a future thing coming too, like in the bookshelf somewhere, which I haven't figured out yet. But we'll see. Um, with getting uh, books for the next couple of weeks, uh, there was a few. You know, like I said, we can talk. Uh, we can't give you any spoilers about things like Batman coming up in January, the first weekend of January, uh, or the first week of January. Um, I did take a look, a little a little peek at them. I haven't read any of the ones for that week yet, but I will. I have. Uh, but I have, I've taken a little peek at them. I have read them. It is really good. Batman was good. It was written well. Um, it's uh, it's called the the origin of Bruce Wayne. Now, don't let that fool you. Don't let that. Don't think it's oh, Tom King is writing you know the same old cliche you know Bruce and pa- his parents die in an alley. This book really is a, it takes another turn. It's called The Origin of Bruce Wayne, but it there's there's a reason behind that. Yeah. It's it's a really good like solo single issue contained story. So Tom King is uh, Tom King wrote it, right? It's not it's not like a guest writer, is it? Uh no, I believe it is Tom King that wrote that. Let me pull it up if my phone doesn't die. My phone is like I gotta say Tom Tom King's uh, Tom King is an astounding uh writer on Batman. I got to say uh, I would say equally as great uh, of arcs so far as Snyder's arcs. Uh, yeah, he's, Tom... he, he's he's continued a tradition of greatness for Batman. Yeah, Tom King wrote this one, and it is really really good. Um, also, uh, like you'll get the first week of January, you're gonna get uh, Batman and the Signal, which is um, the uh, Duke Thomas. Uh, oh yeah, the... I did read that. So yeah, I. I... I, I must have uh, dipped into there <laughs> and read that one. <laughs> yeah, pretty good though. I mean, it's uh, it's one of those I'm gonna need a couple issues to really fully get into it. It's definitely a setup. It's definitely a, a lot of conversations with Bruce Wayne and, and things like that. I mean, it's a it's a setup kind of deal. I don't want to say you can't say too much, but I mean, um, it's gonna. I think it's gonna eventually. It's gonna be a thing of its own. Like, it's, it's definitely gonna be a separate thing of its own away from the bat family i think yeah but dc i mean they're loading you up with books over the next couple weeks i mean you're getting a whole lot of books over the next couple weeks so you're not going to have any um shortage of reading and i'm so happy that i'm off of work all week because i'll be able to go to the comic book store tomorrow on new comic book day for the first time in i don't know how long get all my books in one day which is Merry Christmas to me, because that's going to be a lot of books. I haven't got my books in a while. Well, I, I've i actually read a bunch more of this week's. I've read uh, Action Comics uh, this week, uh, number 994. Uh, still uh, still on Krypton with Booster Gold. Uh, Superman uh, is powerless if uh, case because uh, Krypton's under a red sun. So uh, it's just basically Booster Gold's having to save Superman's regular human ass at this point. Still and, all uh, <laughs> out from the Mr. Oz thing. Yeah, still, still trying to figure out if Jor-El escaped Krypton. But uh, we find out that because Superman used the cosmic treadmill to go back to Krypton before it exploded, he made some minute change in the timeline, and now Krypton is now uh, uh, where before space travel was outlawed on Krypton. Uh, they go to uh, when Superman goes there, Zod and Jor-El are working together to build escape ships to escape Krypton. So something has changed in the timeline just from them, from him coming back, and because somebody had tampered with uh, the original when when they whoever took Jor El, Mister Oz or whoever took Jor El had made him Mister Oz or whatever, uh, took him uh, the moment before Krypton exploded, I guess, and somehow that by Superman going back it changed something to where now Zod and Jor El are allies and they're both working on a space program for Krypton and. Uh, 
like puts a booster gold and Superman immediately get caught <laughs> by Kryptonian guards. And uh, they and Superman runs into they run into Zod and Jor El. So and that's kind of where we're, we're left off now. We're trying to we're going to see what happens next. But uh, that one was pretty good. Uh, Detective Comics were still dealing with Clayface. Uh, the, the victim syndicate's taken over Arkham. Uh, they've got Clayface. Uh, they're torturing him. Uh, but, and they're trying to make him uh, lose his humanity completely because he'll just basically be an unstoppable killing machine if they, if he uh, kind of loses his human side. So they've taken away his bracelet that was designed for him so that he can transform back to human form. And uh, they're just kind of prodding him with electricity and kind of driving him crazy. And uh, the victim syndicate's demanded to, in order to uh, give control back of the asylum, uh, Batman's got to walk through the gates alone and unmask on TV uh, and show who he is and give up being Batman. Well, Batman's pretty much like, fuck that. We're not going to do that. And uh, he goes in and he takes out the whole victim syndicate, as Batman does. And... uh, we come to find out that it was basically just a stall technique and that they had already broken uh, Clayface's humanity and now Clayface is spilling out into Gotham and starting to fuck everything up. So, uh, And that was kind of the plan all along. So that's where we left off with uh, Detective. Uh, let's see. Uh, I also read uh, The Flash, still still dealing with uh, Iron Heights. Uh, murder of a Turbine died. One of the rogues is dead. And uh, supposedly the trickster killed him. Um, we find out that the warden, uh, uh, Barry Allen and uh, his partner, uh, are doing uh, CSI work they shouldn't be doing because they're basically a, a crime scene preservation people now. They're not really allowed to do CSI work. Mm-hmm. But they're sneaking around doing it because uh, Turbine is dead. And uh, and the trickster is admitted to it, but we don't know why because don't, they don't think that he did it. And uh, we find out that uh, Wolf, the the warden at Iron Heights, is doing some crooked shit and just beating the living shit out of the trickster in solitary. And uh, so they find out. uh, Trickster kind of tells him to fuck off, and he doesn't really want to doesn't want to call attention to it or it'll get worse for him. So uh, Barry Allen's now trying to find out what's going on. Uh, We find out now that uh, Captain Cold and the rest of the rogues are under Iron Heights. They've built a huge Lair, they're supposed to be in prison, and they're using like holograms of themselves in their cells, and they're actually all under the prison running a criminal empire. And uh, so they brought, uh, they're trying to uh, bring in Godspeed to be a member of the Rogues because they don't have a speedster hmm. on the Rogues. And so his test is he's going to capture Barry Allen for him. So he kind of lures Barry Allen down to a special cell that they've designed that will. You, that uses Captain Cold's cold technology to slow Barry Allen down so they can they can capture him or whatever. So that's that's kind of how he gets uh, Godspeed's kind of welcomed into the Rogues. So uh, now the Rogues have a a, a flash of their own. <laughs> so that's where we're left off there. So that was pretty good too. Uh, the Hellblazer. Uh, I don't read. I haven't read the the, the first couple issues of this, but we're kind of right in the middle of uh, it's uh, Constantine and. Uh, Another lady are trying to solve. Uh, they're trying to solve a murder uh, that Constantine is initially blamed for, and so uh, most of the books just them going around interviewing people for this uh, for this murder. And I'm, I'm kind of behind on it, but Constantine, uh, Constantine's pretty good. It's still, it's still a good book. Yeah, I read. I I read most of Constantine. Uh, I still get it. And it's it's it. There's those issues where you get action, and then those issues where you get more talking. So it's it's kind of a back and forth. It, yeah, and this this one's definitely it's yeah. It's like the it's yeah, definitely. Cool. I like the character, and, and uh, uh, it's def- it's it's not a cape book. You're not gonna get your ca- it's 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 about magic and uh, and uh, like darkness and 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 debauchery and and just weirdness. And so it's not gonna be your exciting uh, beat 'em up superhero book. It's gonna have some dialogue. So uh, if you, if you're into that sort of thing, you're gonna love it. But yeah, I, I dig I dig Constantine. I, I do dig the action issues a little bit more. Than I do the the talky ones where they're like like this one was they're just going around talking trying to find out who killed who and they get attacked by a couple of people they're uncovering a conspiracy and it's, it's kind of like right in the middle of an arc that I'm not real familiar with so I mean there's not much to tell about it but I mean overall the characters well written and the, the artwork looks good so yeah. all right so is that it 
We good? That's that's all the ones I did. Great. And except for the ones we can't talk about. <laughs> exactly, which we'll talk more about next week. Uh, because we will be back next week with an all new episode. We want to thank everybody for a great 2017. Thank you all for being with us, Maude. Thank you for the Christmas cards. Yeah, thank thanks, Maude. The Christmas cards. Wasn't expecting. Came on Christmas Eve. Strangely enough, I got it in the mail Christmas Eve day. Uh, thank you so much. It means so much to us that you all have been with us for so long. Uh, you all have contributed, uh, at least on the Podbean, to our 29,763 downloads. Uh, we're on the road to 30,000 downloads uh, on right. Podbean alone. We want yeah, to that's, thank- uh, we, we have no idea what the iTunes numbers are, what, what Stitcher, Player FM, uh, iHeartRadio. Heart yeah. We don't know. We don't know. We're filling the void or game. We're, we're like uh, about 15 different places. Yeah. But at least on the Podbean, we want to thank you for that. Uh, I've been looking through, you know, our top ten most downloaded episodes of all time, Chief. This is a really – I love looking at this. You want to know what our – before we get out of here, you want me to run down the top ten most downloaded episodes of the Nerd Rage Renegades podcast? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in that. I know, I know uh, AVGN is going to be one of the top. Number one, episode number 33, James Rolfe, the Angry Video Game Nerd. Yeah, James always brings in some, some listens. Uh, number two is episode number 31, Scott Snyder, part two. Uh, number three is episode 30, Scott Snyder, part one. Surprise. <laughs> episode 123 is number four, and that's the Angry Video Game Nerd Returns. There we go. <laughs> uh, number five, right, one, two, three, four. Number five is episode 131, Cinemasker's Mike Matei. Yeah, I didn't know that. He's, he's up there, huh? Yeah, he's up there. Uh, number six, episode number 28, actress Jessica Cameron, actress-director Jessica Cameron. Yeah, she's still, uh, she still shares the show once in a while. We, need to, we should talk to her again here yes, soon. She's got a couple new things out. Uh, number one, two, three, four, five, six. Number seven is episode number 114, chatting with Cherie DeVille. Yeah, she was cool, too. Number eight. Episode 158, Horror Fest with the angry video game nerd James Rolfe. <laughs> James, uh, hits keep on coming with James. Uh, number nine of the top ten most downloaded episodes, number nine is actually episode number one, San Diego Comic-Con, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Rants. <laughs> the first episode the ever. First episode <laughs> is, is number nine on the top. Oh, 10 that, downloaded. I, we we would probably both cringe if we listened to the very first probably. episode. Probably. Uh, and then uh, number ten is episode twelve, Halloween with Bonnie and Patrick. Yeah, well, we, I almost forgot about that. There's, we've done a lot of fun shit on here, man. We've done a lot of fun shit, and thank you to whoever uh, today. Uh, well, it's saying today. Uh, to that one person that went through and downloaded pretty much every episode we've done. I'm looking through; it's the same IP address, and they downloaded pretty much every episode we had done. So thank what, you. So does much it say country, you country of origin? Where are they, where does it say? Yeah, I don't. We, we don't US. want to dox anybody. It's saying on the U.S. So in, in the U.S. US. Okay, yeah. we won't go any more detail than that, but it's in the yeah. U.S. Thank you so much. Uh, as always, you can follow us on Twitter, Chiefs at Space Chief 75. I'm at the Nerd Ridge Renegades. Uh, official Twitter, facebook.com backslash NRR Truth Radio. Crystal will tell you all the platforms that we're on. The Nerd Rage Renegades are on the air every Wednesday on Podbean, Stitcher, Player FM, iTunes, Google Play, and every Thursday on GamingRebellion.com, filling the Void Podcast Network, and now iHeartRadio. And we want to thank everybody for a great 2017, and 2018 will be even greater. And remember, August 6th through the 8th, if you're in the Chicagoland area, come out and see Chief and I at C2E2. We'll be roaming around a- there. April. April. Isn't it April? April. What did I say? August? April. August. I said April. April. <laughs> Don't April. come in August. <laughs> well, come in Don't August. Don't come in August, because I, I might, you might find me there. But uh, I won't be at C2E2. If you, come in, but... if you come in August, it'll be, Chief and I will be, we'll be over in, we'll be by that uh, burning barrel, just listening for the people singing, Bean, Bean, I'll, I'll be, I'll like be laying on the, girl. be laying on the rocky shore of Lake Michigan, belly up. We like them hot. I'll be laying there like an alligator sunning itself, you can come find me. That's right, baby, we like them hot. 
<laughs> like them beans, girl, beans, beans, beans. So April, April 6th through the 8th, uh, 2018, uh, Spin and I will both be at uh, the Chicago Entertainment and Comic Expo, right? Comic and Entertainment, what else again? C2E2. Comic and Entertainment Expo. I think that's the correct name. <laughs> but we'll be there. We'll, we'll be, there. be there. And uh, a lot of our friends, uh, there's a few of our friends that listen to the show and that we've met in person there before and we'll probably be there. So come join the fun at C2E2. Make sure you check out the YouTube channel for all the commentary tracks, gameplay, and future things that are coming out. Thank you to all the new subscribers on the YouTube channel. And, and hey, Spin, we could, we, could, we could just bring one lucky listener back to my house. <laughs> We're going to pick that one lucky family to come spend the weekend with me and Spin <laughs> at my house. Yeah, they'll never be the same. They'll never, ever be the, after we force them to watch the room with us. Oh, yeah. Oh, hi. So, <laughs> until next time, everybody, Chief, Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year, and good night, everybody. Nerd Rage Renegades.